Greetings fellow gorehounds and welcome back to another Blood Splattered vlog. I'm the Horror Guru. And I'm Count Jackula. And we just watched Carnage Park and apparently there are police officers outside. How apropos. How apropos, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's very apt. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the perils of filming in a big city where there's constantly crime and, you know, bad shit happening. House fires. House fires, yes. Yeah, people... we, we, we had one of those recently. Yeah, yeah, we did. Not us personally, but in the neighborhood. It was, yeah. dude, it was pretty fucked it up. It was pretty nasty. Well, also, like, we also have the problem that we live near the fire station. Yes. <laughs> yes, that also contributes to uh, the noise issues. Um, so, uh, we just watched Carnage Park, which is a new movie by Michael Keating. Keating? Keating. Keating. Yeah. Uh, who also directed Darling, which I did a vlog for. <coughs> Short capsule review of that one was that uh, I liked it, but I felt like there was like something missing. Um, which is kind of how I feel about this movie, I, I was about to say, this continues that trend. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like, uh, Carnage Park is a movie I heard a lot of really good things about from the Twitters. And uh, I, it's, it's a weird movie, but I kind of dig it. But I feel like there's... there's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I think that's spoiler talk though because yeah, yeah. that the, the the disappointment comes in the the twists and turns of the plot. Before we get to the before we get to the spoilers though, like if you like yourself movies that like evoke the 70s because this is totally oh, yeah. 70s worship super 70s worship yeah you know like this has like aspects of like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre aspects of like um Peckinpah films yeah from, yeah like, there's a bit of Sam Peckinpah in here absolutely yeah. um there's a Fuck! Like they're, they're, there's there's parts of this movie that kind of feel like Wolf Creek, which was also seventies worship. So. Yeah, yeah. Like if you if you want the like um, you know sexy one line blurb, in many ways this is No Country for Old Men meets The Devil's Rejects. Yeah, that's a good description. That's a really good description, especially in the feel of the movie. Yes, not so much the plot. The plot is very much Wolf Creek, but the yeah. feel of the movie. Yeah, yeah, the feel of the movie. It invokes those. It invokes a No Country for Old Men and Devil's Rejects. Absolutely. Basically, you have this movie about these guys who try to rob a bank and end up getting like trapped in this game with this like fucking ex-Vietnam vet. Yeah, like, played by sniper. Pat Healy. Pat Healy is awesome in this movie. Oh, yeah, yeah. All the, Most of the acting is really good. You know, you and know? Uh, there's a girl in this movie who is one of the girls that... Who is a girl that the uh, bank robbers kidnapped, played by Ashley Bell, who was in The Last Exorcism. She was the girl who got possessed. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to see her in another good movie. Cause, yeah, yeah. Because Last Exorcism yeah. 2 was, I think, the last thing I remember seeing her in. I probably saw her in something else, but that was the last thing I remember. That was, a, that was the last time <laughs> she was like the star of the film yeah was. and that, last exorcism too and that was a complete piece of shit yeah it's, so it's good to see her um in quality work yeah yeah and this is a quality film absolutely this movie is like it's gorgeous yeah it's very interestingly edited and i say that because it's not conventionally edited yeah yeah very very unconventional but it works it works for what it's going there's a for. lot of non-linear almost tarantino-esque storytelling going on Yep. Um, uh, there's some really great, like, Coen Brothers-esque, like, scenes, like, the, the scene where, um, her character is meeting with the, uh, the bank loan officer. Yeah, the bank, yeah, the yeah. bank loan guy, yeah. Uh, it's very, very, very much feels like a scene right out of a Coen Brothers movie, who are a, another filmmaker that worships the 70s. Yep. Or, or other filmmakers, because there's two of them. Um, uh, yeah, I, it's... What I like about this movie, like, before we get into the spoilers and the stuff I don't like, is that this movie, at no point did I have any idea what was going to happen next. Yeah, every time you think you know what's going to happen, the movie takes a left turn. You know, especially if you know 70s movies. So you're like, oh, this is the point where that happens, because that happened in The Hills Have Eyes, but then that doesn't happen. And you're yeah. like, oh. Yeah, that doesn't happen, <laughs> they do something else. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, all the characters in this movie are very well done. They are. They're all very like, memorable. Like, you love these people, even though some of them are awful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some are just purely terrible. There's a character named Scorpion Joe, who is a completely terrible character, but you kind of like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, know? he's very he's very charming, and you find yourself going like, no, be a bad guy some more, man. Yeah, like, yeah. This, this is great. You know, very much like a pick and paw film, actually. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, Jesus, like, the other thing I like about this movie is that, holy shit, the set decorators of this movie had a blast. Yeah, yeah, it was, I think it was K&B. Like, uh, well, K &B. They, they did the effects of this movie. K&B are an effects group, so they did all the gore. Yeah. You know, and, and, and this movie lives up to that name, Carnage Park. There is fucking yeah. blood and, oh, Jesus, 
people's yeah, faces that title mangled. does not lie to you. you yeah. Know? You know, people caught in bear traps. It was fucking gnarly. Yeah, yeah. It's a low budget film, but they get, there's a lot of bang for your, for their buck. Oh, absolutely. In this like, like there, there are some times where it's obvious they couldn't show the actual hit, but they could show the aftermath. Yeah, and that was done well. So they'll have the hit happen off screen, and you'll have like someone reacting to it, and then you'll see like the result of it. Yeah, and, and oh, it's a great dude. workaround, and and it works effectively the way they do it. Yeah, um, yeah. There's a point where the main character is like tied to a dead, bo- chained to a dead body. Yeah, that effect is great. Oh man, that 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 body was actually really good. It was super gnarly. Yeah, you know, I especially like there, there's one part where that where she has to like move like a really heavy dead body. And, like, I was like, I think they must have got the guy to do that, because... Yeah, it must have been the actor. Yeah, yeah. and he just, he laid so still that you were convinced he was dead, you know? It wasn't like some movies where you're like, oh, I could see him breathing. You're like, oh, was was that a double, or was that a dead body? Cause yeah. There was no breaths happening whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, he did, you know, if it was a real guy, he did a good job. Yeah, he If really it wasn't, did. then the effects people are amazing. Yes, then the effects people did. It, 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 I don't know who to give credit to there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh, but the effects people definitely need credit regardless because, oh God, yeah. Jesus, like, fucking, there's so much cringing and so much, like, ooh, what's yeah. happening while you're watching this movie. Um, so, yeah, I, I like it. I feel like there's something missing, which I'll go into when we get to the spoiler part. But uh, overall, like, hey, I would recommend this. It's worth a watch. Yeah, it's 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 not that long a movie. It's about an hour, 20 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's very short, very short. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's got my recommendation, and, uh, let's move on to the spoilers. Okay, so where this movie starts to miss the mark a little bit for me is that towards the end of the movie... (laughs) Towards the end of the movie, you have a twofold problem. Number one, as much as I like the set piece at the end of the movie... You can't tell what's going on half the time. Yeah. Which is intentional, but also really frustrating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because she's in a cavern, a lightless yes. cavern on purpose. Like, the the owner of Carnage Park, i.e. Bat Ely, has trapped her in these mineshaft tunnels. Yes. And so she's, like, walking around in pure darkness. And for some of it, there's light. But towards the end of it, the lights all go out and they have a lot of, like, like just dark scenes, like in Kill Bill, when she's, yeah. like, first like uh trapped in the coffin um and in kill bill that worked and this movie it happens too much yeah yeah it it takes way too long (laughs) you know so there's many points in the movie where we're sitting there like is it just too dark for me to see or is the reflection on the screen like making yeah 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 (laughs) screen reflection is actually a fucking issue while watching this movie at home yeah yeah so turn off the lights when you go to watch it because that might alleviate that problem that i had with this one yeah because we're watching like (laughs) during the day Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of light spillage you know, but like, like even then, you could tell it. It was just a really dark sequence. It was um, visually, and that got frustrating because you reach a point where you're like, "Wait, did she just kill the bad guy?" <laughs> and you're yeah, not sure. Yeah, yeah, and that that's something that happens <laughs> with the with the editing because you're like, I don't. It's the one point where the editing of the movie annoyed me was because that combined with not being able to see. Yeah, because you wanted to know, did she get him? Did he get away? Are we supposed to not know? But we can't tell. Absolutely. And um, you, you kind of get your answer with a very um, Wolf Creek-esque ending where, like, the girl, like, starts walking off and it's just like, oh, the girl went and saw the police and they went and found and his body was never found, blah, 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 blah. You know, but which... I liked it in but Wolf unlike Creek. Unlike when Wolf Creek did it, where that felt <laughs> like the ending of the movie... <laughs> This felt super abrupt. Yeah, well, it was abrupt in Wolf Creek too, but like in this movie, it was less satisfying. Yeah. Um, uh, plus, in Wolf Creek, it actually was based on some missing people cases. In this one, I couldn't find any evidence that that was actually. Yeah, real. yeah, yeah. No, it's it's like <laughs> no, it's pure bullshit. It, it's completely I, like did it, it, it. This movie did it because Texas Chainsaw did it. That's all. Yeah. Like, that's all you can really take from it. Um, <clears throat> which is another thing. It opened up with like, oh, like this is the most grisly murder thing, like much like Texas yep, Chainsaw Massacre. Exactly like but Texas Chainsaw. Yeah. I don't know if it needed that, but eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was really weird. Like it, 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 it. This is absolutely a film that was is being carried by the strength of the talents of the people involved. And speaking of talents, uh, Larry Fassenden. Shows yeah, Larry Fassenden's in the movie. He's got a really brief cameo in the movie, but it's it's a welcome cameo. It is. 
Absolutely. He's the guy trapped in the bear trap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's only there for like five minutes, but he's really good. Acting his ass off. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, man. Fucking. Actually, although I got to say, like, my favorite performance, probably Pat Healy. Pat Healy was having a ball. Yeah. Like, he, every time he was on screen, you could tell he was loving playing this, like, super religious, crazy Vietnam vet <sighs> bad yeah. guy. Yeah. <clears throat> I love that whole line. People ask, yo, is it justice? I say, God, don't play favorites. It's like, <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, shit. Absolutely. That light is great. Yeah. Pat Healy, oh, man, like, he completely disappears into this movie. He does. You know, he could do that in movies, but in this movie, he wasn't playing Pat Healy at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even in, like, Cheap Thrills, you felt like he was Pat Healy. Yeah, yeah, like a variation of Pat Healy. This was a completely different character. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, uh, God, I can't remember the actor's name, but the guy who played the sheriff was a name actor whose name now escapes me. God damn it. Yeah, I forgot. He's one of the, he's one of those, uh, that guys. Yeah. You know, a character actor that shows up in a lot of stuff. Um, if I can remember, I will put his name right here. So you could like, you know, but the, that, that guy was great in this movie too. He plays the sheriff who turns out to be Pat Healy's brother. Yep. Um, so he's in on the whole thing, but he's not actually down with the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's in on it, but he's not like super comfortable with it. Yes. Um, and, and one of the things yeah, I like that they... You seem, he seems to be he's mainly doing it because he's protecting his brother. Exactly. It's very much one of those family over the people he's killing things. But it becomes too much. And what I like is the scenes where he's, like, practicing what he's going to say if yeah. his brother gets caught. And I thought that was a really great character thing. It was. <laughs> you know? And especially, like, when he has to, like, call in stuff and act like it was a surprise. And I love that when he does that. It's, it's just one of those, like, oh, man, this guy must live his whole life doing this. Like, just trying to... Pretend to be genuine, all because his brother can't stop killing people. Yep. Which, yeah, and it's yeah the look of the the look of the killer like they very obviously like borrowed a lot from uh, my bloody Valentine. Oh yeah, yeah, and especially that ending sequence inside the uh, mine shaft. Yeah, very much felt like my bloody Valentine, which was weird because this was. 70s and 60s worship, so having that 80s movie pop up was Yeah, weird. yeah, it was it was strange, <laughs> but uh, but maybe it was because it was like really early 80s. Who knows? Who knows? Um uh un unlike Darling, which felt like just pure Polanski, this one is taking from all sorts of 70s things. Yeah. Um and 60s things, a lot of 60s things as well. And there's a whole reoccurring theme about um Vietnam War and war vets and there's like a character who might may or may not be a draft dodger. Yeah. Introduced and, uh, like, the reason why the bank teller, not the bank teller, but the <clears throat> girl they kidnap um, was at the bank in the first place because their brother abandoned them when the draft happened, and so there was no one to take care of the farm, and as a result, like, this guy fucked them over. Yeah. So she's trying to get the money and the loan so that their, their farm isn't taken away. Yeah. And, and, and here's the thing. You never meet the father. You never meet the brother. It's superfluous to the plot, but it tells you everything you need to know about this girl. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think my biggest, the, the, the biggest moment that it might break the movie for everybody mm -hmm. is I understood what they were doing, mm -hmm. but I got to go back to that ending because it really is that whole like 70s thing of it's over. You know, you're like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> You know, and that, and I, I think, like, is the point where you're like, oh, this is good. This is good. A little dark. <laughs> like, like lighting-wise, actually. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't see this dark. You know, to the point. And then you, but as soon as, like, she escapes the mind shaft, it's like, it's over! And you're like, <laughs> I get what you did there, movie. But I'm like, okay. <laughs> I think that that's going to bug you more than most other people, to uh, be honest. Okay. <laughs> It did bug me as much. It, was, it reminded me way, way too much of Wolf Creek, though. But that's it. <laughs> yeah, well, despite that, I actually quite enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I dig the movie. It's not like a five-star movie, but it's definitely a three to four, depending upon yeah, yeah, you where you land with very. it. You know, um, uh, for me, it's probably more of a three. I probably, there's probably a couple things I would have liked. I would have liked the ending to be a little clearer. Yeah. You know, not, not that, not clear in that, like, I want, like, everything explained. I just want to see what's happening. <laughs> that's, yeah, <laughs> that's all. Um, and I would have liked, uh, I would have liked a little bit more 
to happen at the end. Cause... Yeah, yeah. It's 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 just um, Ashley Bell in the dark. Yeah, I could have taken like another ten minutes of just one more beat. Yeah, yeah, because because it really did feel like it needed one. It really did feel mm-hmm. like they needed to be one more beat, even if it, even if it was just like Pat Healy like coming up out of the ground and grabbing her. Yeah, like yeah. That, oh god, you know? that would have been an amazing ending. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I fucking did do the Friday the Thirteenth. Like, like, even if you did that, where she's like standing there, she starts to walk away. He runs out of the mine shaft, like dun dun dun. dun. Pulls her back into the cave, and it's just like she was never found. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. That would have been perfect. That would have been absolutely perfect. That would have been awesome. Um, yeah, I tried to look it up, and I couldn't find any evidence that, that was this was a real thing at all. Yeah. So if it is, my apologies, but I couldn't yeah. find anything. But I, got, I got a feeling it's just like Texas Chainsaw is pure bullshit. Well, at least Texas, Ch- Texas Chainsaw had Ed Gein as a basis. That's true. You know, so yeah. it wasn't a complete lie. <laughs> Just misleading. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I said, like, despite that, I really like the movie. It's yeah, yeah. good. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. uh... Worth a Netflix watch, at the very least. Oh, absolutely. And that's where we watched it. We watched it on Netflix. So if you have Netflix in North America, check it out. And, uh, with that said, uh, I, I guess we'll see you at the next vlog. <laughs> <laughs>